Have you thought about calling home? No. Have you? Well, what about your uncle? Can't really do that. Well, if it's better than being out here, I'd give it a shot. Yeah, but it's not, though. It's just all sorts of other complications. He's a nice bloke. But too nice. I can't be taking advantage of him. Oh, well, it's OK to take advantage of me, is it? <laughs> it was hurting me. Now that I think about it, it's, it's not right, is it? Don't know what you mean, really. You took me in when I had nowhere else to go. Just took the mickey, really. You're not to blame, it's not your fault. I'm sure he didn't think of it like that. The look of disappointment on his face last time I saw him. He kept his bottle of wine in the living room. It was like an ornament, always on the coffee table or next to the sofa on the fireplace. Always in the way, really. He always had to move it to get to something else. But I didn't know it was important. I didn't know why he had it. My auntie. Oh, I don't remember her too well, but I remember she was dead nice. They were having a baby and she was in hospital and there was a problem. And my uncle had bought it especially for them to celebrate when they came home with the baby. It never came home. But that was years ago. No one told me about the wine. It was late. He was out at work. I was watching the telly. There weren't any other bevies in the house. I kept drinking it, so we just stopped buying it, right? I thought I could replace it the next day, borrow some money off him, and he wouldn't even notice it had gone. came home around four. I was asleep on the sofa. The bottle was empty. I woke up when he turned the light on. It was so bright and he just stood there, staring at me. Didn't say anything. I tried to say sorry, but it didn't come out right. And he just stood there, his eyes all blazing over. And then he went up to bed, and that's when I knew I had to get out of there. I didn't want to upset anyone with him. I didn't want to upset him. So I left. You're a good girl.